ICANN Security and Stability uh, Committee publishes absolutely wonderful and informative reports to tell registrars how to handle these situations. And this is uh, SAC 38, uh, dated uh, February 2009. Every registrar should have an abuse point of contact because um, registrars have, you know, customer service, they have salespeople, they have something. But when something really, really bad is happening, something really urgent that needs immediate attention, the registrar should publish an abuse point of contact. And um, it doesn't really say that the, the, what exactly that person is supposed to receive out of that laundry list of things that, that you know, get sent to registrars, which someone's saying, help, DNS abuse. Uh, because this lovely sentence at the end of the report, the details of what constitutes abuse and what protections must be provided against false complaints must be worked out with the registrar community and the user community. And um, I, I had to pull this example. I had to pull this example of one that got escalated to my level uh, because some of the registrars that I work with have trained their staff very well. If something look, looks like it's official or involves a government entity or something like that, it absolutely has to get you know top shelf uh, top shelf treatment, particularly uh, national security letters, uh, which which have to be limited in, in the number of people that see them. Uh, but this urgent complaint, state of Texas wildlife, uh, Texas Texas Park, state of Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, and it was please contact me immediately. I said okay, well uh, you know this one looks important, uh, something from from the state of Texas. What is the domain name? you know, that you're interested in, please describe the problem. Uh, I'm not interested in a domain name. I want to comment on the Texas Parks and Wildlife webpage. I found an injured wild bird, a cedar waxwing, and was told to check out the Texas Parks and Wildlife webpage that it would have information as to where to take the injured bird for rehab. There was nothing on that page about wild birds. When I called the phone number for the next town that was in our phone book, there was no answer. I called the number three times this morning, so what good is your web page if we can't find information about wildlife on it? Um, and you, you know, it, it's one thing to say that, well, you know, we can run 10,000 complaints a day through a system that's, you know, maintained by uh, 10 people in Marina Del Rey, um, but some of that volume you know, increases, uh, increases the noise level. And, and actually, there is a federal offense involved here because it, it turns out, her, you know, she had a much larger problem because it turns out that wax wings are federally protected and you, are not, you, you cannot keep them in captivity. She was committing a federal crime. So I informed Ms. Norma Peck of that. The other problem with wax wings is they do tend to get injured a lot. Um, because they eat, uh, they eat fruit and they tend to stay too long in one region while the fruit ripens and it falls. And you know about this too, it's the from Texas. And, it's <laughs> and the fruit starts to ferment and what happens is the wax wings eat the fermented fruit, they get drunk, they fly into buildings and injure themselves. And that's why you end up with a lot of injured wax wings and no way to help them. But this, you know, is, I, I, some mornings I just really don't want to get out of bed to find out what, what the DNS abuse you know, of the day is. Um, measures to protect, uh, let me get to actually this one, uh, SAC 40. Um, this is a very helpful publication. Measures to protect domain name registration services against exploitation and mis or misuse. And um, there are two <coughs> stellar recommendations in here. Uh, one of them, is protect registrant information that can be used to facilitate fraud and impersonation and theft of a domain name. As a default, treat any information that is used in regist registrant authentication privacies, processes as private. Um, and if, if you want to know how to how impersonation is used to um, uh, steal domain names and exploit them, the SAC published another report, SAC 28, Exploiting information guaranteed from bonus services. Okay, so by default, treat it as private, but make sure it's public and accurate at the same time. And, and this is what happens when you get these you know, colliding agendas. Um, registration service providers rely uh, on unconfirmed email to deliver security-related correspondence uh, than email delivery assurance and security characteristics merit. Uh, and that is, is absolutely true. There's a lot of email fraud that goes on. But the ICANN uh, transfer policy that registrars have to follow 
uh, actually prohibits um, a losing registrar when a domain name is transferred uh, from stopping that transfer except under very defined circumstances. Now, sometimes registrars do come up with, you know, we see this every day and we do see some problems and we do see certain profiles involved with, you know, hijacking the domains in particular, and I'll bring up GoDaddy's experience with this, is they found that uh, basically uh, domain hijackers would change who is information and then immediately transfer it out to another registrar so that the inter-registrar hop would be authorized according to the transfer rules. Um, and so GoDaddy instituted a policy of uh, requiring a 60-day wait before a registrar change, and GoDaddy was penalized for this uh, severely by ICANN for violating the inter-registrar transfer policy. So it, it, it's one thing to say, well, here's a provision of the contract I want enforced, um, but there are collisions between some of the security priorities and some of the uh, requirements that are put on, um, on registrars.